G'day, g'day, I'm Chase of Blungo Reacts, and today we are going to be reacting to The Great Silence. This is because we hit 250 subscribers, so I just want to say thank you very much to all of you who have subscribed. Turn on that notification bell because you are directly supporting my channel when you do that. But yeah, The Great Silence, I promised you guys this uh, for a 250 sub special, uh, and we're going to be reacting to Cicada and a few other Let Me Know documentaries that I haven't done uh, after this one, obviously. But yeah, The Great Silence, I believe this is something space related i haven't seen this i don't believe uh but yeah i'm excited uh, if this is your first video that you are seeing of me hello my name is jason blanco reacts uh you can follow me on twitter and instagram at chyznz and join my discord link in the description all right let's not waffle any longer the great silence by let me know let's go just let me know oh i've missed that i've missed the the newer let me know intro just let me know beautiful just let me know Oh, this is eerie as. Sounds like an alien heartbeat. In 1967, a postgraduate student <clears throat> at Cambridge University by the name of Jocelyn Burnell. Damn, Cambridge, so it's what, Massachusetts? Probably a pretty prestigious uni then. Surveying the sky with a newly constructed radio telescope. After a few weeks, she discovered something odd. The telescope had picked up a radio signal that seemed to be pulsating. The pulses had an interval of exactly 1.33 seconds and were initially thought to be nothing more than man-made interference. Imagine oh. hearing that. Imagine the nightmare you'd have. Like, you're finding something that no one else has found before and you hear that. Like, oh, your chills would run down your neck. However, it soon became clear the signal did in fact emanate from deep space and the unwavering precision of the pulses was unlike anything seen before. Hmm. As such, many questioned whether it was a naturally occurring phenomenon or a transmission from another civilization. The radio source Imagine, was imagine you are the person who discovers a potential <laughs> greeting or sign from another intelligent species of life in our universe. Like, you would freak out. Imagine this is an alien's attempt at trying to communicate with us. Maybe, like maybe it's morse code although it's in an interval 1.33333 seconds so i guess it wouldn't really be morse code but i don't know imagine if that actually was aliens trying to communicate even named lgm1 an acronym <coughs> for little green men and bernal herself oh, I wish. could not help but wonder <laughs> if she'd actually discovered the first sign of life beyond the earth that would be absolutely incredible don't think she did though because we would have known about it <laughs> As you might expect, it didn't take long for natural explanations to emerge and we now know these pulsating signals to be produced by rapidly rotating neutron stars. Wow. As pulsars that emit beams. That's still incredibly cool that we can hear something from so far away in the middle of space or well, the middle of our galaxy, but still in space. We're hearing a neutron, a neuron. What is it? Sorry. Produced <laughs> by rapidly rotating neutron stars. Neutron. A neutron star. So the fact that we can actually hear something outside of our planet and so clearly as well and record it, it's so incredible. Space is fascinating and I think Lemino's done a lot of videos on space and he finds it quite fascinating too. ...known as pulsars that emit beams of radiation akin to the beams of light emitted by a lighthouse. If nothing else, it made for a neat album cover. Ever since, an international effort known as the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence has actively been listening for artificial transmissions, but so far we appear to be the only ones broadcasting into the void. Humanity has been leaking radio signals into space for the better part of a century, so any eavesdropping aliens within about a hundred light years could potentially be alerted to our presence. It's so cool that we actually have done that. It's cool that we've actually attempted to um, communicate with possible other signs of life beyond this invisible radio bubble enveloping some 15,000 stars, the Earth is just another silent speck. Not only that, but as- That's weird to think about as well. We are literally a tiny, tiny, tiny blue dot in the middle of pretty much an infinite void. So if you think about how, in a sense, insignificant li our lives are, I don't know, it's a weird, like, step back moment to, like, think about. Uh, think about our mort mortality as well. Technology improves, this radio leakage is dramatically reduced. Before long, Earth may return to a state of radio silence. 
If most civilizations improve and eventually outgrow radio technology at a similar pace, the radio signature of any one civilization may only be detectable for a very brief period of time. Hmm. Furthermore, this radio leakage is extremely faint and only grows more and more diffused as it expands into the galaxy. Some of the most wow. powerful signals to leak into space are military radar emissions and stand a much better chance of detection across interstellar distances than the average television broadcast. The Square Kilometre Array, a vast interferometer to be constructed in South Africa and Australia, could be sensitive enough to detect the faint radio signature of an Earth-like civilization out to a distance of several hundred light years. To detect more wow. distant signals would require more deliberate attempts at communication. For instance, an advanced civilization may construct powerful beacons specifically to increase their radio luminosity. These beacons would be rather expensive to maintain as they would consume vast amounts of energy for extended periods of time. A less expensive alternative would be a focused beam of radiation as opposed to an omnidirectional broadcast. In 1974, the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico famously beamed an interstellar message towards a globular cluster some 25,000 light years distant. The message took less than three minutes to transmit, so any prospecting aliens in the path of that signal would have less than three minutes to detect it. And oh, unlucky. It's like, it's like leaving someone on scene. It's like unlucky. <laughs> and they will never get a second chance. We may have been wow. on the receiving end of such an interstellar message when in 1977 a momentary burst of energy swept across the planet. Repeated attempts at redetection notwithstanding, the famous WOW signal was never detected again and its origin has never been conclusively ascertained. On the wow, slim chance that it was of artificial origin, a reply was beamed in a general direction whence it came in 2012. And that's pretty much the year that everyone said the world would end too. Also, thank you all for your suggestions on what I should react to. I've found a lot of new channels, uh, a lot of them historical, a lot of them science, uh, and a lot of them just, you know, knowledge and, uh, what's the word? Uh, informative, I guess. <laughs> uh, so uh, educational is the word. Um, so I've found a lot of educational channels for us to react to and, uh, yeah, got some cool content planned for the future. <clears throat> Keep the comments up too, because we've been reading In a, a lot galaxy of as old and vast as the Milky Way, the probability of two civilizations stumbling upon one another by briefly screaming in random directions is not great. <laughs> to increase our chances, we need to limit our... Could you imagine if our, if our galaxy had a mouth and just went... Ah! <laughs> just, just like every few hundred years, just to see if it's like... It's like whales trying to beam at different, um, like trying to sing at different frequencies and trying to like, uh, so others can pick them up and, you know, join their, their, what's it called? A, a colony? Uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever whale groups Selection are called. Selection of targets by searching for other technological <laughs> and biological signatures. In 1995, the first extrasolar planet orbiting a sun-like star was discovered. We now know that the vast majority of the hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy are home to at least one planet. We also know that Wait, billions what? of those stars in the Milky Way was discovered. We now know that the vast majority of the hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way galaxy are home to at least one planet. We also Wait, know that each star has a planet. They must be small though, right? That's still crazy to think about though. And what what do they say? There's more stars in the Milky Way galaxy? Or maybe in the universe, then there are grains of sand on our planet, like... <laughs> that billions of those planets are of similar size to the Earth and orbit within the habitable zone of a star similar to the Sun. This means that oh, liquid water okay. could exist on the surface, which is an essential ingredient for life as we know it. Furthermore, billions of extrasolar moons may also be capable of supporting life. With this knowledge in mind, in 2017, a message was beamed towards one of the least distant and most Earth-like exoplanets discovered to date. The message comprised a number of musical compositions and basic information about humankind, and should the planet be inhabited, we could expect a reply as early as 2044. Here's a quick preview of that future. <laughs> However, habitability is no guarantee of habitation. To determine whether a potentially life-supporting planet is currently supporting life would require a more careful examination. For instance, by analyzing the starlight passing through the atmosphere of an exoplanet, it is possible to deduce its chemical composition. 
the spectrum of an oxygen-rich atmosphere will differ from that of, say, a hydrogen-rich atmosphere. Hmm. Given that photosynthetic plants and- Well, what is it? Like 70, the, the air we breathe is like, what, 77% hydrogen and like 22.8% oxygen and then like heaps of other little bits or something. Organisms are responsible- Little, little other chemicals in there as well that make up the air we breathe. It's not because a lot of people, it's not just all oxygen, like we would die. Well, for the large quantities of oxygen on Earth, an exoplanetary atmosphere with a similar concentration of oxygen could be taken as a sign of life. That makes sense. But also, like, think about what he just said there, like, each star, hundreds of billions of them in our galaxy, each star is pretty much the sun and it has a planet and that planet circling that star can have a moon of its own. So... What he's saying pretty much is that there are billion, hundreds of billions of places pretty much just like Earth, but without life. So you can perceive that as us being very, very insignificant and not important. Um, or we are, since we are, well, as we know, the only intelligent life force, life species, intelligent life in our universe that we know of then we're very, very lonely. <laughs> There's two ways you can look at that, but I mean, as far as we know, we're the only intelligent species in our planet, uh, in our, you know, in our uh, galaxy. I get the words mixed up. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is but no yeah, it's, it's really interesting and freaky to think about. It's a biosignature, but it's far from definitive as oxygen could also be the result of various abiogenic processes. As such, astrobiologists are more interested in certain chemical combinations as it would be far less likely for, say, methane and carbon dioxide to coexist in the absence of life. Speaking hmm. of carbon dioxide, some chemicals can be indicative of industrial pollution and thus artificially induced climate change could serve as the universal sign of unintelligent life. In Whoa, that's interesting to think about because, say, they were doing the same thing to us and, you know, if you think about it, we're kind of self-inducing climate change with carbon dioxide i mean they could perceive the same thing that we would perceive of them with that <laughs> in addition to biosignatures we may be able to detect signs of technology for instance an exoplanet surrounded by a dense orbital belt of artificial satellites or space debris could be detected during transit of its parent star this would be an example of a techno signature a hmm. more extreme example would be a megastructure crazy also, thanks for pointing out, um, internet historian is from New Zealand, so I'm, I'm so proud. I'm so proud I found a, a New Zealand YouTuber that makes content that I can react to. Um, but yeah, thanks for letting me know. He, he did move to Australia, but yeah, he's from New Zealand. The initial speculation surrounding the discovery of pulsars has become somewhat of a recurring theme. Whenever an astronomical discovery initially defies explanation, vigorous speculation about aliens takes center stage. In more recent years, this discussion has been dominated by a peculiar star some 1500 light years distant. The star exhibits erratic light fluctuations and occasionally dim by as much as 22%, and so yeah. one hypothesis is that an alien megastructure is blocking the light from the star. While evidence mm. of astroengineering is still within the realm of possibility, the dimming is now thought to be caused by nothing more than dust. Oh, the existence of circumstellar megastructures was popularized by theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson back in 1960 as a potential means for advanced civilizations to harness the energy of their parent star, commonly known as the Dyson Sphere or Dyson Swarm. According to the Kardashev scale, a method of measuring a civilization's energy consumption proposed by astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev in 1964, a Dyson Sphere would be indicative of a Type II civilization. A Type 1 hmm. civilization could harness the energy of its home planet. A Type 2 civilization could harness the energy of its parent star. I've heard about these Type 2, Type 1, Type 3 civilizations. It's really interesting. It's like a... It's kind of what um, would you would explain like a first world, second world, third world country as like what, attri like what attributes do, does this have to fit into this certain bracket, I guess you'd say. And I think a Type 3... Civilization is like super futuristic. I could be wrong. We might be as a type 3. I've heard about it, but I'm not like educated in it. A type 3 civilization could harness the total energy output of an entire galaxy. Okay, yeah, so I was kind of right because we're not a type 3 civilization then. 
extensive surveys of billions of stars notwithstanding, there is no reliable evidence of a Type 2 nor Type 3 civilization in the Milky Way galaxy. Well, there you go. I'm glad I've learned something. But yeah, I, I know Type one of the types was was very futuristic and not yet discovered uh, or heard of really. So we're type one then. So I guess that's easily explained. <laughs> it's so sad though. It's so sad that there is no intelligent creatures uh, on any of our other planets. It's so it's so weird and like I guess that's where religion could come into it and why a lot of people believe in God. It's like how lucky we are that we are what we are. We are how we are we have life on this planet and everything is perfect for us to live and prosper so it's another weird thought <laughs> so far what about extra galactic life after surveying 100,000 nearby galaxies for signs of a type 3 super civilization astronomers found no signs of a galactic empire that, that could be good or bad, because bad, like, oh, we got no neighbours, but good as in, they'd crush us. They'd be that technologically advanced that they would just crush us like a grape, you know? Like, I don't know. Or, you know, they'd just see us as chimps. Like, you know, like, what's the point in hanging out with these dumb apes who know nothing? <laughs> like, look at them and their, their minuscule, pathetic type one civilization it's like i don't know i'd say it's it's good and bad but more good <laughs> they'd be like the galaxy's bully <laughs> Love how the cinematic great silence of the universe can be a bit unnerving. Human exactly, it's so scary to think about. I'm not going to interrupt him anymore, I'm just going to let him say his thing though. <laughs> the great silence of the universe can be a bit unnerving. Humanity is now on the verge of detecting biosignatures on extrasolar planets, but Earth has been radiating detectable biosignatures for billions of years. Yet, as far as we can tell, it's failed to attract the attention of any alien astronomers. The apparent contradiction between the expectation and lack of evidence for extraterrestrial life is known as the Fermi Paradox. Given the sheer size and age of the universe, why does it appear to be so lifeless? It is possible to concoct a myriad of hypothetical solutions. Perhaps life is common while intelligent life is exceedingly rare. Well, yeah, like they say bacteria on Mars is considered life, but you know, it's not intelligent life like us. So, again, another weird, a weird thing to think about. And that could tie in with simulation theory, like how is everything perfect? How is everything so perfect that the air we breathe is just right, the climate is just right, we have everything we need to sustain ourselves on this blue marble, and there are no other intelligent, there's no other intelligent life on any other blue marbles in the known universe that we know of. Like, it's so weird that we are living on this blue marble, the one <laughs> that has life like we're so lucky and again simulation theory it could be maybe it's all just a simulation and that's the reason that we're here <laughs> i don't know man it's freaky after all it took some four billion years of evolution and a number of mass extinctions before humans emerged on earth mm. proponents of the rare earth hypothesis suggest that complex life on earth is the result of an improbable chain of events unlikely to occur more than once Perhaps oh, they're unlikely to occur more than once, bro. That is... Imagine, we're just one in a hundred trillion. Like, what? I don't know, it's freaky. Never gonna happen again. So that means we'll never find intelligent life ever. I don't know, it's freaky. ...exists a barrier, either improbable or impossible for life to overcome. If the barrier is behind us, we may be among the fortunate few to have crossed it. Potential mm. candidates include the emergence of multicellular organisms and the invention of nuclear weapons. If the barrier is still to come, we may soon join the cosmological graveyard of fallen civilizations. Potential candidates <laughs> Don't include say unsustainable that. climate change and the invention of nuclear weapons. Oof. Perhaps we yeah. severely underestimate how truly alien aliens can be. All life on Earth is carbon-based and rely on water, but life could hypothetically be silicon-based and thrive in oceans of liquid ammonia. Just as we mm. search for life as we know it, Aliens may be doing the same. 
Perhaps an advanced civilization did in fact pay us a visit in the distant past, unless some sort of evidence of that visitation survived for millions or billions of years, we'd never know. Well, I think there was a, a painting, I think it was, oh, I think it may be Italian or Rome or Israel, um, thousands of years ago, and there was a UFO in it. And I think there may have been Egyptian inscription, uh, inscriptions on, on a wall of possible aliens or stuff like that. So it's very uh, ambiguous, but, you know, it, it could be. So maybe they have visited us in the past and, uh, and we've made contact and just nothing's come of it, though. Who knows? Even a visitation in the recent past could have been misconstrued as gods descending from the heavens. Well, I mean, that would have been a fairly accurate interpretation. Perhaps all <laughs> yeah, civilizations exactly. inevitably develop technology that transcend physical reality. For instance, reality could be rendered obsolete by hyper-realistic simulations. By transferring one's exactly. consciousness into these virtual wonderlands, one could achieve digital immortality. The happenstance offerings of nature would struggle to compete with the promise of utopia. Yeah, I mean, look at what people already envis envisage the future as. Putting your memory and your conscience and your sentience into a, a, a electronic device and then you live forever it is immortality or even vr you are technically and if you get like full body suits and uh, they'll all it'll just keep developing over time so you'll just be able to plop your headset on plop whatever you want on it, to make it feel as real as possible and be completely transferred to a utopia where nothing goes wrong and you can do whatever you want with no consequence so it really depends on how, how far it goes in the future. Throughout the galaxy, pockets of advanced civilizations may occupy no more than a few star systems as they explore inner space in place of outer space. In his hmm. Transcension Hypothesis, futurist John Smart takes it a step further <laughs> and so Again, another John, you get that reference. And also John Smart, that's a, that's a good name, not gonna lie. The post is introverted evolution will progressively miniaturize computers until they are so intensely compressed that they generate an environment analogous to black holes. These oh, post-biological civilizations would thus transcend the space-time continuum and vanish from the visible universe. Oh, hypothetically God, freaky. Speaking. Apart from <laughs> artificial transmissions... And I love how he does that, those jump cuts. Hypothetically speaking. <laughs> hypothetically speaking. Apart from artificial transmissions and distant signs of astro-engineering, there's also a far less remote form of techno-signature. The Voyager spacecraft was launched in 1977, and as of the making of this video, it is the only probe to have reached interstellar space. It famously carries wow. a golden record with information about mankind, but it will take another 40,000 years before the probe encounters another star. In an effort to more expeditiously explore the galaxy, an advanced civilization may launch sophisticated interstellar probes capable of self-replication. These probes would be intelligent enough to mine the available resources in any given planetary system to create copies of themselves. That's incredible. Can you imagine if, like, another alien civilization sent their own Voyager and they just crashed into each other and collided and exploded? Ah, oh, big rip. F in the chat for that. <laughs> That's, it's sad that 40,000 years, though, until it encounters another star. And, I mean, the chance of that star having any intelligent life? It's pretty slim, so... Uh, not a lot of hope for the Voyager. Cool name, though. Cool name, the Voyager, Voyaging Through Space. These copies would then travel to neighboring systems and create additional copies. Oh. If these probes could travel at just 10% the speed of light, a speed attainable by modern methods of propulsion, every corner of the galaxy could be exhaustively explored in just a few million years. A relatively short amount of time on cosmological timescales. Yeah, true. <laughs> Mankind is now fast approaching the technological sophistication to launch such a probe. Come on, Musky. This begs the question, <laughs> why is the solar system so probeless? If human hmm. progress is any indication, the galaxy should be completely overrun by self-replicating automata, yet we see no evidence of that. An ongoing hunt for alien artifacts has yet to locate any covert probes lurking in the solar system. But space is vast. An object of extra solar and constantly expanding our origin could easily be zipping around our cosmic backyard without our knowledge. In fact, that is exactly what happened in 2017. 
An Recent, extrasolar yeah. object named Oumuamua passed through the inner solar system and went completely unnoticed until it was moving away from the sun. Even then, its discovery was pure luck and thousands of extrasolar visitors could go undetected each year. The size and shape of Oumuamua can only be inferred by the amount of light it reflects, but it appears to be highly elongated or extremely flat. Wow. Initially, it was thought to be a comet, but the absence of a cometary coma, a trailing cloud of dust and gas typically formed when comets approach the sun, lent credence to it being an asteroid. But then the object began to accelerate. This acceleration would be consistent with the outgassing of a comet, but as mentioned, Oumuamua does not display the expected characteristics of a comet. One possibility is that this outgassing is simply too faint for us to detect, but there is that remote possibility of it being an interstellar probe. More specifically, a probe using a light sail as a means of propulsion. On the other hand, Oumuamua is perfectly radio silent. Perhaps it's a defunct probe destined to aimlessly roam the galaxy, much like Voyager. Maybe it was sent billions of years ago. <laughs> Who knows? So many questions with stuff like that. Like, their technology would be different to ours as well. It's important to remember that with a sample size of one, that being Earth, we cannot possibly know how common or rare life truly is. There mm. could be hundreds of planets or millions of galaxies between us and them. If life was discovered elsewhere in the solar system, perhaps beneath the frozen mantle of Europa, we'd be able to compare and contrast two distinct sources of life and gain crucial insight into its commonality or rarity. Many reject the anthropocentric view of Earth as a cosmological oddity due to the sheer number of Earth-like planets coupled with the resilience of life on Earth. But the truth is, we don't know. We don't yeah, know it's easier to say, oh, there's probably heaps of Earth's growing life, it's heaps of intelligent life, but... No evidence shows that, so... Yeah, there are Earth-like planets, but there's no Earth, Earth, except for us, you know, so... I don't know, that, again, it comes back to that thing, like, everything is technically perfect for us to live here. If billions of planets is sufficient for intelligence to arise more than once, we don't know the prerequisites for abiogenesis, the transition from non-life to life. We don't know the probability of cosmic solitude. But to conclude that we are alone in the face of all this ignorance is more than a bit presumptuous. The extent of our search for extraterrestrial intelligence has been compared to searching a glass of water for evidence of fish in all of Earth's oceans. <laughs> Space is unimaginably vast and we yeah. have barely begun to scratch the surface. There are so many untapped avenues for detecting signs of life that if we just turned that telescope a bit to the left, made it a bit larger and listened to a slightly different range of frequencies, Perhaps the universe wouldn't be so silent. Damn. Very, very weird to think about. And I guess that's it. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I'm going to stop this so I don't get any nightmares. <laughs> that was The Great Silence by Lemino. He makes a good point. I mean, our universe is so vast that i mean they say what 95 percent of the our earth's oceans haven't even been explored so how would we know what lives at the very bottom of the ocean you know so that was a very interesting and creepy and unnerving as he said one to react to it was different um but it really makes you step back and think how lucky i guess we are and how alone we are at least now we there is so much we don't know and that's kind of space in a nutshell it's a lot of stuff that we don't know about um but let me know your thoughts about this video in the comment section below and as always uh recommend me some new uh videos or channels or whatever you like whatever you want me to react to it in the comments because i read every comment and i again thank you very much for 250 subscribers uh, make sure you turn on that notification bell and subscribe if you are new because we're a growing community uh, join the notification squad. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at chyznz. And join the Discord links in the description. I've been Chase of Thanks again. Love you so much. Peace out.